This is a quick tutorial about getting photos to look a little bit better in a really fast way using GIMP. So what I've done is loaded up a picture that I took about a year ago when I was living in Malaysia. It was a balloon festival. It's a good photograph, lots of balloons, but if you look at the foreground over here, the trees, the cars and the people, it's far too dark. And if you have a look at the sky, it's kind of it looks like a dull day and it was actually a very, very bright morning. So. In this respect, it's a underexposed photo, as in there's not enough light in this photo. So let's get going here. Let's go to our layers over here. I'm going to pick up my layer, like so, and just duplicate it. I'm going to take this bottom one, which is now my original one. I'm going to hide it with the eyeball there, and I'm going to click on the lock, which means that I can't actually touch this. So the edit we're going to do right now is called a non-destructive that means we're not going to destroy the original in fact we're just going to work on layers on top of it so i've got this copy of layer and if i hide that you'll see that there's absolutely you know nothing underneath it so let me just switch that back on you'll notice gimp is quite slow with this as it's quite a large photograph it will uh, lag a little bit so let's not worry about that i'm going to take the layer that i'm working on pick it up make another copy so this is one on top and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to where it says the mode and in this case, I'm going to choose screen. And you'll see, and GIMP takes a little while to do this, but you'll see immediately the top layer is helping the bottom layer to look better. So screen basically takes your light areas and your colors and it makes them a little bit brighter. It takes a little bit of time for GIMP to do this, but I think you'll agree that once we've put the screen on top, it actually makes the whole picture look a lot better. Now. If you find that your picture's a little bit too bright, you can go to your opacity and you can just reduce the opacity to whatever level you want. So let's say if I make it around 74, 75%, you'll see that it's not as bright and it goes back to slightly gray. I myself prefer the really bright one, so I'm gonna push that back up to 100%. I, I can live with this photo. I, I don't really mind that the sky is white. I really do love that the balloons are coming up in a lot brighter colors and it just makes the whole picture look a lot better. Yep, GIMP's lagging. That's not such a problem uh, because once it's done I'm going to save my photo and I can use it on my website and I think it looks far better than the original. Now once this happens, come on GIMP, once this happens let's go back to the original and see what we actually started off with. So I'm just going to go to the eyeball over here and hide it. Uh, you'll be quite shocked to see that the actual original photo is incredibly dull and this is not a usable photo on an internet site. So what I'm going to do is let's put my layer back on and you can see it's a huge improvement. I think you'll agree. Okay, so that that's using a layer with the mode of screen. So that's a way of lightening a dark picture. Let me just close this down. I'm not going to save it right now. Now let's load in another picture. This is a photograph of a cabin in the woods, and believe it or not, this was my first ever house in Holland when I moved here in 1999. I used to live here in a cabin in the woods. It's kind of scary. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to pick up this layer. I'm going to duplicate it, take the original, hide it, and lock it. So that's the same routine I do in GIMP or Photoshop or any program that I use for touching up photos, I never work on the original layer. So I'm going to go over here, and now what I'm going to do is again pick up that layer, duplicate it on top. Uh, for the last photo we used screen, and for this one what I'm going to use is a soft light. So once I switch on the soft light you'll see what happens. I actually want to darken some of the colors and bring out some of the reds in the tiles on top of the house here. You'll notice that the flowers sitting over here will suddenly brighten up. It does take its time and you'll see how you can suddenly see the grass a little bit clearer and although it's a little bit darker on this side I don't mind so much. Uh, if we want to combat the darkness let's uh, take this one to our curves. If you remember now if you have a look at this uh, photograph uh, it's a little bit hard to understand but if you have a look at this little graph at the bottom, it's basically showing you that this photograph is made up of mainly dark. And you can see that because my mouse is near the black. And you can see this graph is saying that there's a lot more dark colors here than there are light colors. In fact, there's very few light colors here. So what I want to do is I just want to brighten up some of these dark colors. Now, the darkest colors 
are in this bottom right hand corner and the top right hand corner where the shadow from the trees and the shadow from the uh, uh, grass and bushes are over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my curve and I'm just going to bend it up slightly. What you'll notice is the house changes a little bit, but the, the biggest change comes in the darkest parts here. So you'll see as it comes down, it will just lighten up slightly, which I quite like. And I'm going to take the curve and I'm going to put the rest back where it was because I was quite happy with the rest of the photo. So if we just move that out of the way, you can see the grass still kind of looks clear. The flowers are a bit more colorful and I can just kind of lighten or darken the darkest areas of my photos. Let me just do that and see what happens. Yeah. And you can see it's just kind of going through and lighting up. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that one. So I'm going to press OK. And that's uh, using the soft light mode on top of a layer. So what I think you should do is when you get a photograph and you're not happy with it being too dark or too light, uh, go ahead, make a layer, duplicate it, and then experiment with all the different modes that you have. There's a there's a bunch of them. And the only way you're going to learn what they do is to just click on it and see what happens. Again, once you've used one of these modes, you can always control the end result by taking your layer and changing its opacity. And that will kind of give you more or less of an effect on your layer. So I hope that helps you out with your photographs that are underexposed or overexposed.